Good night, brothers and sisters. Happy Sabbath. Welcome back. Um, my name is Trevor Israel, and I'm coming to you from the Gospel of Jesus Ministry. I want to talk to you tonight about a subject. Food. The subject is food. What is right for us to eat according to the scriptures? What is wrong for us to eat according to the scriptures? I know this subject is a kind of touchy, so I want you all to please bear with me. And remember, brothers and sisters, I'm just a mailman delivering the package. I'm not responsible for the contents that is in the package. I'm just the mailman. So, as I say, what I want to talk to tonight about is food. The Bible has a dietary law that we are supposed to follow. When we buy, we go to, to the dealership and we buy a car, we purchase a car. In the glove box, there's a book. That book is the instruction manual for the car. Hear me out, brothers and sisters. That book is the instruction manual for that car. In that book, the manufacturer of that car puts what kind of oil is supposed to be in that car, what kind of brake fluid you're supposed to use in that car, what kind of gasoline you're supposed to use in that car, what kind of power steering fluid you're supposed to use in that car, what kind of transmission fluid you're supposed to put in that car. All of it is all of this, brothers and sisters, is put there for the purpose of us knowing what will make that car run efficiently the way it's supposed to run. Likewise, this Bible is our rule and guide. The content that is in the pages of this book, we are supposed to take heed to. Because what's in this book is supposed to lead us to salvation. Just like how we follow the instruction of the car manual, we're supposed to follow the instructions of this book. Just like how the oils and the different gas and stuff that you put in the car to make it run efficient. Well, God gave us a dietary law. The things that we're supposed to eat and the things that we're not supposed to eat that will make our body operate the way it's supposed to operate. If you put the wrong oil, the wrong fluid, the wrong gas in that car, what will happen to that car, brothers and sisters? you will tear it up. Likewise, if we are putting stuff in our bodies that is not supposed to be in our bodies, what do you think is going to happen to us? We are going to tear our bodies up the same way. We have been eating things for so many years that, is, been, that has been passed down from generations to generations to generation. We learn from our poor parents, from our parents, to us, then we give it to our children. And why do you think a lot of times when you go to the doctor, 
the first thing the doctor asks you when you have a sickness or illness is do you have a trait of it in your family, in your family history? They always ask you that. Why do you think that they ask you that, brothers and sisters? These things are not hereditary. The doctor knows that they're not hereditary. The reason why he asks you that because if you were doing the same thing that your parents did, and your parents were doing the same thing that their parents do, did, what do you think is going to happen? They're going to most likely end up with the same sickness. If you keep doing the same thing over and over, you're going to get the same results. So the same bad eating habits that our ancestors had, and we come doing the same thing, we end up with the same sickness. It's not hereditary. It's not hereditary. If the doctors then tell you that is a lie, it's not the hered it's not hereditary. It's the same habit. The same habit that they had is the same habit that we raise up with. That's why we end up with the same sicknesses. Anyway, time to start this lesson. We're going to start this lesson off from the beginning. And we know the beginning is in Genesis. We're going to start it in Genesis 1, Genesis chapter 1. We're going to read 29 to 31. Genesis chapter 1, verse 29 to verse 31. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of the tree, yielding seed. So this is another thing. This is a learning something and the way to learning something. Every fruit is supposed to have seeds. So when you buy fruits that don't have seeds, like grapes, watermelons, that don't have seeds in them, we're supposed to think, brothers and sisters, where did this fruit come from? If it don't have no seed, where did it come from? It's a, the fruit supposed to come from a seed. And you, you're eating watermelon, seedless watermelon, seedless grape. Where did the grape come from if it had no seed? Where did the watermelon come from if it had no seed? Hmm. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree in which is a fruit of the tree, yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. To every beast of the earth, and every fowls of the air, and everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. So God gave us fruits and vegetables, the green herbs, those were supposed to be our meat. When God first created man, God created man and beast to be vegetarian. We were not meat eaters. We were all created to be vegetarian. Every one of us. Man and beast. I'm going to show you when did God put meat on the table. Because remember, when God created man, man was not supposed to die. Man was supposed to live forever. But, so if man was supposed to live forever, how was we supposed to eat meat? Nothing was supposed to die, remember. 
Everything was supposed to live forever. So if everything lived forever, then we can't, we don't have nothing to eat, no meat to eat. Let's go to Genesis 6. Genesis 6, we're going to read 5 to 7, we're going to read 12, or we're going to read 17 to 22. Genesis 6, chapter 6, we're going to read verse 5 to verse 7. Then we're going to skip to 12. Verse 5, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of their thoughts and of their heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. So here is a God repented, or he regretted that he made man. And brothers and sisters, this is Jesus. Most of what I'm reading, even though I say God, is Jesus. Jesus is the one that made man. Okay? He said, It repented the Lord, which is Jesus, that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping things and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. Verse 12, And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt of all flesh, had corrupted his way upon the earth. Let's go to verse 17. Verse 17 to verse 22. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of water upon the earth, to destroy all flesh wherein the breath of life from under the heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee I will establish my covenant. He's talking to Noah. With thee I will establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy son's wife with thee. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort, shall, shall thou bring into the ark, to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female, of the fowls after their kind, and of the cattle after their kind, and of every creeping things of the earth after their kind. Two of every sort shall shall come unto thee to keep them alive. And take thou into thee of all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee. And it shall, it shall be for food for thee and for them. Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him. So did he. So God told Noah, you need to bring the, uh, every animal in the boat, two by two, male and female. A lot of people think that it was two clean and two unclean animals. But it was not so, brothers and sisters. It was seven clean animals, seven of the clean animals, male and female, and two of the unclean animals male and female. Okay. Check this out. We notice here that God made a difference between the clean and the unclean. Right? Notice that he made a difference between the clean and the unclean. Okay? We're going to go to Genesis 7 we're going to read from verse 1 to verse 9. Genesis 7, we're going to read from verse 1 to verse 9. Listen here. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, 
For thee have I seen a righteous before me in this generation. Of every clean beast, this is what he says, of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by seven, the male and his female. And of the beasts that are not clean, by two, the male and his female. Notice this. this notice this. Some um, something here, brothers and sisters. Every everywhere you go in this Bible, God is always referencing the male first. Have you noticed? Even when he talk about animals, he referred to the male first, male and his female. Just like when he talk about people, he talk about male. Everywhere you see here, the son of, the son of, the son of, the son of, the son of. Because God made man the head. He made man the head. So you're always referencing male first. Verse 2 again. And of, and of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by seven, the male and his female, and of the beasts that are not clean, by two, the male and his female, of fowls also of the air, by seven, the male and the female, to keep the seed alive upon the face of the earth. So the fowls of the air, male and female, right? For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And every living substance that I have made will be destroyed from the face of the earth. And Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. And Noah was six hundred years old when the flood of the water was upon the earth. And Noah went in and his sons, and his wife, and his sons' wives with him into the ark because of the water of the flood. And of clean beasts, and of beasts that are not clean, and fowls of everything, and every that creepeth upon the earth. And notice here, he said, fowls of everything that creepeth upon the earth. The Bible refers to anything that flies, anything that flies, like a roach, a grasshopper, anything that flies is referred to as a fowl, right? Everything that flies, the Bible refers to them as fowls, fowls of the air. They went in two by two into the ark, into Noah's ark, male and female as God has commanded Noah. So, even though it's, it's seven of the clean, but they went in two by two, right? Seven clean and two unclean. Why, brothers and sisters, did God make this reference or made a separation between the clean and the unclean? Because God knew when the flood was over, he was going to put meat on the table. And... Every animal that came over on the ark is living today. Everything that you see living here came over on the ark with Noah. Right? And the reason why he made the difference between the clean and the unclean, because the unclean, brothers and sisters, we are not supposed to eat. They are unclean. The clean ones, Noah's had to use them for sacrifice and also food. The clean animals, because you cannot give, offer up a dirty or unclean animal to God. You cannot offer up an unclean sacrifice to God. It has to be a clean sacrifice. So that's why he took seven of the clean, more, because we were going to use them for sacrifice and for food. Right? Let's go to Deuteronomy 14. Deuteronomy 14. 
Deuteronomy chapter 14. Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse 3. He said, thou shalt not eat any abominable things. So I want you to remember this. He said, thou shalt not eat any abominable things. If you eat abominable things, then you are abominable. abominable. If we eat abominable things, then we become abominable. Right? And I know abominable is a bad word. That means it's so nasty. If we defile our body with abominable things, then we ourselves become abominable. All right? Let's go to Deuteronomy 11. We're going to go to the dietary law. Deuteronomy 11. Deuteronomy chapter 11. Another thing that I want to make clear. Jesus, I've always been talking to Israel, the Jews, the Israelites of the Bible. He always gave the word to Israel, and then in return, Israel have to give it to the rest of the world. Because remember, Israel is God's priest. Israel is the priest. So he gave the word to Israel, and Israel, in return, have to give the word to the world because he left Israel in charge of teaching the gospel to the world. When he sent the 12 out into the world, all of them was Israel. And he told the 12 to go ye out into all the world and teach the gospel. So when he talked here, he is talking to Israel. But remember, whatever Israel does, Whatever law is commanded to Israel, everyone, everyone else have to adhere to that same law. Because remember, the law is not Israel's law. It's God's law. But remember, Israel is the priest. So he gave, Israel, he gave the law to Israel, and Israel have to, in return, give it to the rest of the people, the rest of the world. All right? This is Leviticus. Chapter 11, we're going to do some skipping, because it's a lot. You're going to have to go and read it for yourself. Read the whole chapter 11 for yourself. But we're going to do some skipping. We're going to read 2 to 4, then we're going to skip. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which you shall eat among the beasts that are upon the earth. So he's saying, these are the things or the animals that you shall eat that is upon the face of the earth. Whatsoever parted the hoof and is cloven-footed and chewed the cud among the beasts, that shall you eat. So he said, whatsoever is have cloven-footed and chewed the cud, these animals you can eat. So you know, like, let me give you an example, like a cow. A cow... It parted the hoof because you have to part the hoof and cloven foot it. So it round with a parted hoof and it's through the cud. Every time you see a, a cow, you notice that it's always chewing, chewing, chewing. Always have something in mouth because what they do, they regurg regurgitate their food, regurgitate or whatever they call it, their food. Right? So they're always chewing. They're always chewing the cud and they have cloven foot it. They have to have both brothers and sisters. It have to have a split hoof and chew the cud. If it have a split hoof and it does not chew the cud, that can't work. It have to have both. It have to be cloven footed or part the hoof and chew the cud in order for it to be clean. So verse 3 again. Whatsoever parted the hoof and is cloven footed and chew the cud, among the beasts, that shall you eat. Right? Verse 4. Nevertheless, these shall you not eat of them that chewed the cud, of them that divided the hoof, 
as the camel, because he chewed the cud, but divided not the hoof. He is unclean to you. So he gave you an example. The camel. The camel chewed the cud, but the camel foot is rounded. It doesn't have a split hoof. So that's an example. You cannot eat that. It have to have a split hoof and chew the cud. It have to have the both, what do you call it? Criterias. It have to have the both criterias. All right? Let's skip to verse 7, 7 to 12. And the swine, and the what? And the swine. So brothers and sisters, we know what the swine is. The swine is the pork. The swine is the pig. The swine is the bacon. The swine is the ham. All right? And the swine, though he divided the hoof, and is cloven-footed, yet he chewed not the cud, he is unclean unto you. Again, brothers and sisters, verse 7. He says, And the pig, the swine, though he divided the hoof, and is cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. So he got a split hoof, but he does not chew the cud. A pig, he does not chew the cud, but he's cloven-footed. The Bible says, the Bible, not Kilroy, not Trevor, the Bible says it's unclean. We're not supposed to eat it. He even expounded on it. Verse 8. He said, of their flesh shall you not eat. So you know people just eat that fried, that fried pig skin or fried pork. It comes in a bag. Tell you the truth, I used to eat it. <laughs> when I was growing up, I used to, we used to tear that thing up, man, because it tastes good. Right? But the Bible says we are not supposed to eat it. Right? I know it tastes good, but we are not supposed to eat it. Verse 8 again. Of their flesh shall you not eat, and their carcasses shall you not touch. They are unclean unto you. These shall you eat of all that are in the waters. So I just gave you a little synopsis of what's on the land. He told you about the, the camel. He gave you an example of the beast that is on the land. He tells you about the pork, which is the pig, that is on the land. Now we've gone to the water. We've gone to the water. Verse 9. These, these shall you eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever has fins and scales in the waters... In the seas, in the river, them shall you eat. So listen carefully, brothers and sisters. Because I was, I was guilty because I used to eat them too. Because they taste good. <laughs> so he said, in the water, in the seas, in the river, the only thing that we are supposed to eat is fish that has fins and scales. Listen again. These shall you eat that are in the waters. Whatsoever has fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, in the rivers, them shall you eat. So it have to have both criterias also. It have to have fins and it have to have scales. If you catch a fish, like a catfish, the catfish has fins but it does not have scales. You cannot eat it. It has to have both. It has to have fins and scales. And if, if it has scales and it don't have no fins, like an eel, you cannot eat it. It has to have both criteria. And these are the only thing that in the water that you're supposed to touch. Nothing else that is in the water, in the seas, in the river, we are supposed to touch. So you know what that means, brothers and sisters. Shrimp, crab, lobster, oysters, all of these things, we are not supposed to touch them. They are put there to balance the ecosystem. 
And by us taking these things out of the waters and putting them on our table, that's why the ecosystem is so off balance. That's why it's so off balance. Because God put these things there to clean the bottom of the ocean, just like how he put the pig to clean the land, he put those things to clean the bottom of the ocean. They are vacuum cleaners. They are there to keep the ecosystem balanced. That's their job. Everything that God made is good. Don't get me wrong. Everything that God made is good. But it's good for what it's made for. They have their purpose. A fly, a buzzard, a roach, a leash. All of these are good because God made them. But they are good for what they are made for. Not everything that is made is made to go in your plate or on your table or in your pots. God made them for a purpose. They have the purpose. They are there to keep the world balanced. That's their job, their duties. We are not supposed to eat everything that is here. God gave us a dietary law that we are supposed to follow. If we follow these dietary law, we wouldn't have so many sickness running around in the world. Diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, all these things can, comes from we are eating the things that we are not supposed to eat. Our body was not created to break down these things. It was not created for that. So, verse 9 again. These you shall eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever has fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, in the river, them shall you eat. So nothing else in the water you're supposed to touch is off limits for every one of us, for everyone. Israel and the strangers. Off limits. And all that have no fins, listen what it says, verse 10, all that have no fins and scales in the seas and in the river of all that move in the waters and of every living things which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. It says unto you, but it's unto us because I'm included. Whatsoever don't have no fins, no scales of all that is in the sea, in the river, it's an abomination unto us. We are not supposed to touch them. So that means you're talking about crab, shrimp, lobster, oysters. They are not supposed to be touched. They are not ours. They shall be even an abomination unto you. You shall not eat their flesh. You hear what he says? I didn't say it. I am the mailman. The Bible says it. We are not supposed to eat their flesh, but we shall, their carcasses shall be an abomination. Whatsoever has no fins, this is verse 12, whatsoever has no fins, no scales, in the water, that shall be an abomination unto you. He told you about three times. Don't touch it. Don't touch them. They are not ours. They belong to God. He put them there to do His work. The only thing that is for us in the waters is fish. That's it. And it, the fish have to have fins and scales. So no catfish either. That's off limits. Let's go to verse 26. Actually, verse 20. Sorry. Verse 20 to 22. All fowls that creep, going upon all fours, shall be an abomination unto you. So all fowls that go upon all fours, or everything that flies, that walk on four legs, we're not supposed to touch either. Yet these may you eat of every flying, creeping thing 
that goeth upon all fours which have legs above their feet to leap with all upon the earth. So we're going into the fowls, the flying stuff. So I gave you something that is on the land. I gave you the thing that is in the waters. Now we're going and check out some of the things that, that flies, like birds. Right? Even these of them you may eat, the locust after his kind, and the ball locust after his kind, and the beetle after his kind, and the grasshopper after his kind. So listen to <laughs> Listen to this, brother and sister. I told people, I told a couple of people that, you know that, you know you can eat grasshopper. They're like, ew, grasshopper, that's nasty. Locust, grasshopper, that is nasty. But check this out. The Bible says that you can eat grasshopper, right? And we say that is nasty. But the Bible says the pork is nasty. But yet we tear it up. We eat it. The Bible said the pork is nasty. It's an abomination. And we eat that thing and go back for seconds and thirds and fourths. Lick our finger. We eat the skin. We eat the, the nose, the mouth, the tongue, the, the foot. We eat everything that is on the pig. I love it. But the thing that God said is good for us. <laughs> we say it's nasty. You see how backwards we are? You see how lost of a people that we are? Verse 23. But all other flying creeping things which have four legs and four feet shall be an abomination unto you. 22. Okay. Let's go to 26. Verse 26. Because... As I say, brothers and sisters, chapter 11, you can go and read the whole thing for yourself. I'm just giving you some, some of them because it's a lot. It's a lot of um, scriptures. So you can go back and read the whole, the whole chapter for yourself. Verse 26. The carcasses of every beast which divided the hoof and is cloven-footed, no chewed the cud, are unclean unto you. Every one that touched them shall be unclean. So it's telling you, they are unclean unto you. So if you mess with them, you also are unclean. So if, it's the same thing. If you defile your body with unclean things, then you become unclean. Let me put myself in there. If we defile our bodies with unclean things, then we ourselves become unclean. All right? Let's go 29 and 30. 29 and 30. As I say, brothers and sisters, you can go back and read the whole chapter for yourself. 29 and 30. It said, These also shall be unclean unto you among the creeping things that creep upon the earth. The weasel, the mouse, and the tortoise after his kind. So the tortoise is what? Turtles. We're not supposed to eat turtles. It's unclean. The mouse. You know some people eat rats. They are unclean. These things are disease carriers. We're not supposed to eat rats. We're not supposed to eat tortoise. We're not supposed to eat weasels. These things are unclean. Verse 30. And the ferret. <laughs> And the lizard, and the snails, and the mole. So the mole, the snails, the lizard, the ferret, they are off limit. We are not supposed to eat these things. These things are an abomination unto us. Right? Let's skip to verse 44. We're going to read verse 44 to verse 47. For I am the Lord. Listen here carefully, brothers and sisters. For I am the Lord, your God. You shall therefore sanctify yourself. So what is God saying? He said, hey, I am your God. So you need to separate yourself, sanctify yourself. And you shall be holy, for I am holy. So what God is telling us right here, brothers and sisters, 
that he is holy and by us defiling ourselves with the things that he called unclean will make us unholy. That's exactly what he's saying. Jesus is letting us to know that he is holy. And we have to sanctify ourselves, means separate ourselves from these abominable, abominable things. We have to be like him. Holy like him. So again, verse 44. For I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore sanctify yourself, set yourself apart, separate yourself, and you shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall you defile yourself. You know what he said? If we eat these abominable things, that means we defile our body. We defile the temple of God. Because remember the Bible says, our body is the temple of God. And God temple is supposed to be what? Holy. So if we put abominable things in our temple, now we become unholy. Right? We shall be, you shall be holy for I am holy. Neither shall you defile yourself with any manner of creeping things that creep it upon the earth. For I am the Lord that bringeth you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. You shall therefore be holy for I am holy. He can't tell us enough. He can't stress it enough. We are supposed to be holy as God Jesus is holy. Verse 46. This is the law of the beasts and the fowls and every creeping creature that moveth in the waters and every creature that creepeth upon the earth to make a difference between the unclean and the clean and the difference between the beasts that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. So let me read verse 47 again. Because we're going to run into this scripture in the Bible again. So verse 47. Listen to what it says. To make a difference between the unclean and the clean. And between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that can be eaten. So... We have to make a difference between the beast that we can, we can eat, the food that we can eat, which is the food that he said that we can eat, and the difference between the unclean and the clean. He gave us the, the, um, the examples. The ones then that are unclean, we're not supposed to eat it. It's straightforward. We don't need no interpretation. It's simple English. Simple. It's not hard. Don't eat that. You can eat this. It's not hard. The dietary law is in the Bible. Okay, brothers and sisters? Now, let's go to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy. As I say, brothers and sisters, I was also guilty also because we was raised up on these things. But then... The Bible says when you are a child, you do the things of a child. But when you become a man, you put away childish things. When you know better, you do better. If you know better and you continue not to do better, then you are held liable. And as the Bible says, we are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And the Bible says, because we reject knowledge. So, case in point, I am bringing this to you, brothers and sisters. So when you hear this, and you're still doing it, I'm not telling you to stop, because he said, let every man work on the, this own salvation with fear and trembling. So if you fear the Lord, if you fear God, you will change. If you don't fear God, then you, can, you will continue doing what you're doing. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. If you fear God, you will do what he says. If you don't fear God, then you will continue to walk in the folly or walk in contrary to what the word says. 
I'm not forcing nobody to do nothing. I'm not forcing nobody to stop. I'm not forcing nobody to, to do it. I am merely bringing the scriptures to you. And it's up to you to make that move. The move is on you. First Timothy 4, and we're going to read 4 and 5. First Timothy 4, 4 and 5. We're going to read some scriptures later on where the preachers or the false prophets who was not sent by God is telling people this means that you can't eat these things. So we're going to run into them later on. And we're going to break them down. We're going to explain them. We're going to let the Bible explain them. So 1 Timothy 4. And we're going to read 4 and 5. This is one of them. For every creature of God is good. Yes, brothers and sisters. Every creature is good. But not every creature is good for your plate. Remember, God made everything. Everything that God made is good, even people. We insult God when we go and try to put in breast augmentation, booty augmentation, because what we're telling God is like, he don't know what he's doing. That's basically what we're telling him. He don't know what he's doing. And his work was not perfect enough. God made us in our own way. He made every one of us beautiful. Everyone is beautiful in our own way because God made every individual their own. So if we go and think that we are not beautiful enough or we put an implant, booty implant, that means we are telling God that he don't know what he's doing. We are insulting God. Basically, we are just hypocrites. That's what we are, hypocrites. Because we're telling God we wasn't satisfied with what he did. All right? So he said, for every creature of God is good. Yes, they are good. Whatever he made for your plate is what's supposed to be in your plate. But everything that he made is good. The fly is good. The roach is good. The mouse is good. The leash the buzzard that is on the street eating them dead carcasses or dead animals that are underground, they are good because God made them. Right? The next part of it. And nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. But listen, listen to the other half of this. Because this is where the preachers them stop. Everything, every creature of God is good and nothing to be received, um, refused if it be received with thanksgiving. That's where they stop. So the people now, they're telling the people, you see, you can eat anything. But read the other half of this thing. It says, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. So now we have to go and see what is sanctified. Sanctified means to set apart. Sanctified means to be set apart. So let's go back to Leviticus. Leviticus 11, and we're going to read verse 44. Because remember, brothers and sisters, we have to let the Bible interpret itself. We cannot go and interpret the Bible. Because the Bible is, not, is, is, is given to us. We did not give it. It was given to us. So we have to let the Word interpret the Word. So when you read half of the sentence to try to justify what you're doing, not you, I'm talking about the leaders because they are the ones that tell us that we can do these things. They read half of it and they say, you see, you can't eat it. But they don't read the full context of what the, 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 the verse is. He says, for it is sanctified. So we have to find out what is sanctified? Remember, sanctified means to set apart. And what he did in Leviticus 23rd chapter, he set apart the clean from the unclean. He made a difference. 
That's the sanctification, making a difference. All right? Verse 44, for I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore sanctify yourself. You hear that? You shall therefore sanctify yourself, and you shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall you defile yourself with any manner of creeping things that creep it upon the earth. So remember, brothers and sisters, the Bible tells you that God changed not. The Bible also tells you that Jesus, the same yesterday, when he came and when he left, he is the same all through the book. So the same thing that the disciples them teach from Genesis is the same thing Paul them teach in the end. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Bible says, I am God and I change not. God don't change. Because if he used to be changing his mind, then he would be flip-flop. And the Bible says God is not the author of confusion. He's not the author of confusion. He is God and he changed not. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So God is not going to tell you, don't eat something and all of a sudden he's going to tell you, eat it. That is confusion. So when you see certain things in the Bible, you have to let the Bible interpret itself. So he's talking about, he said, for it is sanctified. So you have to find out what is sanctified. Sanctified means to set apart. So what he did, Leviticus 23rd, all the animals is here. But what he did, he separated those that can be eaten and those that you cannot eat. Let's go to Titus, the book of Titus. Titus 1, we're going to read 10 through 16. Titus 1, we're going to read 10 through 16. Titus chapter 1, we're going to read verse 10 through verse 16. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. Remember, these same people, the Israelites, which is my ancestors, the Jews, among these people get a lot of their customs from the nations that they always been around. Because remember, brothers and sisters, our ancestors was continually going through slavery. We were continually going through slavery. All through the book, we've been going through slavery. God's people, his chosen people, which is the Israelites, which is the Jews, not the Jewish people, the Jews. The Jewish people are not the Jews of the Bible. The Jews are the people of the Bible, which is my ancestors. But that's another lesson for another time. These people, as I say, the Jews, my ancestors, they was constantly going through slavery. So every nation that they come amongst, they're always picking up their customs. Always. We were set here to be a light to the rest of the nation, but instead we let the other nation pull us in and draw us in to do what they was doing. So instead of we teaching them, guess what? Now the students is teaching the teacher. That's how it is. It's just like you go to school and you the teacher is sitting down and you up there teaching. That's what we were doing. God leave, left us here to teach the world the gospel. But instead, we have the world teaching us their doctrine. So they was picking up customs from all these different nations. Egypt, especially Egypt. Because remember, we've been in Egypt for over 400 years in slavery. And in Egypt, they had over a thousand gods. They had gods for everything. The goddess of fertility, they worship. At Christmas, they had every kind of god they had in Egypt. So, this is what he said. For there are many unruly, vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. We are referred to as the circumcision. 
and the other nations of people are referred to as the uncircumcision. They are the uncircumcised and we are the circumcised. All right? Whose mouth must be stopped. Who subvert whole houses, teaching them things which are not for filthy lucre sake. So we are the one, our people are the one going around teaching these people that we must break God's law, break God's commandments, do the things that he said not to do, eat the things that he said not to eat. So God, the Bible is telling them, these people, they subvert whole houses, teaching things which they are not for their filthy lucre. Let's verse 12. One of themselves, even the prophet of their own, said, The Christians are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. Listen to what it says, verse 13. This witness is true, wherefore rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in their faith. So we, the Bible is saying, rebuke these people that are vain talkers, so they can come back to God. They can be sound in the faith. Not giving heed to Jewish fables. You hear that? Don't give heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men because most of what we are following today, brothers and sisters, are not the commandments of God. Most of what we are taking heed to and following in this time is the commandments of man. Everything that we're doing, man tell us. Man tell us that we have to worship on Sunday. The Bible tells us that we have to worship on Saturday. Man tells us that we're supposed to celebrate Jesus' birthday on December 25th. The Bible tells you not do that. Don't do that. Jeremiah 10, it tells you those are the works of the heathen. Don't do it. But man is telling you to do it. Man is telling you that Jesus died on Good Friday. The Bible tells you that Jesus died in the midst of the week. Man is telling you that Jesus rose on Easter Sunday. The Bible tells you that Jesus rose on the eve of the Sabbath. So everything that man has been telling us, the Bible is telling us something different. So man was, is not preaching the Bible. They're preaching their own commandments. The commandments of man. It says, verse 15, Unto the pure, all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled, and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their minds and conscience is defiled. So the people who defile themselves with abominable things, they are defiled. Even their conscience is defiled because they are the one that is following the commandments of man and not the commandments of God. Verse 16. They profess that they know God. You hear that? They profess that they know God, but in their works they deny Him. They profess with their mouth. They know God and they love Him, but look at what they do. They're eating all these things that they're not supposed to eat. So what they're doing? They're denying Him. Because He tells us we're not supposed to eat these things. So in works, they deny him. They're worshiping on Sunday. But he told them that my worship day is Saturday. They're denying him. Everything that we do that is contrary to this word, we are denying God. Verse 16 again. They profess that they know God, but in their works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient. And unto every good works, reprobate. Do you know what reprobate is? When somebody hardened their mind, hardened their brain, that they would not listen to the word, to the truth. So what God does, he let them to continue to believe a lie. So he made them, he made them to be reprobates. He made them to continue to believe the lie because they don't want to believe the truth. They want to believe a lie. So what God does, he hardened their heart. Continue to believe the lie. Because what happened? God is going to chastise them when he comes. So that's why he ended up making them reprobates. 
So again, they profess that they know God, but in their works they deny Him, being abominable. How you be abominable? By defiling your body with abominable things. Now you are an abominable. And you are an abomination. Defiling your body with abominable things. Right? God turned them over to be reprobates. Let's go to Malachi 3. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. Again, brothers and sisters, I know this thing tastes good. But the Bible said that we are not supposed to eat these things. These things are an abomination. Malachi 3, we're going to read verse 6 and verse 7. For I am the Lord, and I change not. I told you this earlier, brothers and sisters. He said, I am the Lord, and I change not. Therefore, the sons of Jacob are not consumed. God don't change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let's go to Hebrew 13 and read verse 8. Hebrews 13 and verse 8. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. Jesus, the same yesterday and today and forever. This is what I said earlier. Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is do not um in Titus he said I am God in Malachi he said I am God and I change not. Hebrew says Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. He don't change his mind. What was good yesterday is good today. If he tell you not to do it um, yesterday, he's not going to uh, change his mind and tell you to do it. Because that's confusion. And don't let the pastors them, the blinded pastors them out there, tell you that it's okay to do. These people don't have your best interest at heart. These people know where their destination lies. And guess what? They want you to follow them where they're going. And it's not for me to say where they're going. But wherever they're going, they want you to follow them. And I know it's not in the kingdom. So you figure it out. Let's go to Acts. This is another chapter that they use to say that you can eat anything. But we're going to break it down. Acts 10. This is another scripture that the, the lying preachers them use to say that you can't eat anything. But let's break it down. We're going to read from 1 to 28. We're going to read 31 and then 35. Acts chapter 10. We're going to read from 1 to 38, 28. So bear with me, brothers and sisters. We're going to eat. We're going to read from 1 to 28. Then we're going to read 31 and then 35. This is another scripture that they use to say that we can eat anything. God, God made everything clean. <laughs> oh my gosh chapter 10 verse 1 therefore there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius a centurion of the band called the Italian band so right here we're talking about a man a man named Cornelius he was an Italian he was a Roman a centurion all right? So we're talking about a man. Remember that. We're talking about a man named Cornelius. A devout man. And one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming in unto him, saying, unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid. And he said, What is it, Lord? So here, the angel came to him 
but look and, and call his name. But his reply is, what is it, Lord? And he said unto him, thy prayer and thy arms are come up for a memorial before God. And now send man to Joppa to call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodged with one Simon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. So the angels told Cornelius, Hey, God heard your prayer. Because remember, he said, the, the, the book said, he was a devout man and he prayed daily. He always prayed to God. So the angel came to him and told him, Hey, God, I come to tell you that God heard your prayers. So what, I, what God wants you to do, he wants you to go and seek Peter, which surname was Simon, whose surname was Peter. Go seek Simon, whose surname was Peter. Go and look for Peter. He will tell you what to do. All right? So verse 6. He lodged with one Simon a tanner, whose house was by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou art to do. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. So Cornelius gave them instructions. He called his, his, his people, his two men, and his soldiers, and gave them instruction to go to Joppa to look for this guy whose name is Peter. Right? And on the morrow, which is the next day tomorrow, as they went on the journey and drew nigh, come near, unto the city, Peter went up on, top, on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. So Peter now, he went up on top of his house roof to pray. He says the sixth hour, so I guess that's six o'clock. I'm guessing that's six o'clock. He said about the sixth hour, Peter went up on top of the house roof to pray. And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance. So the men them that was inside was cooking. The, the other guys, the people that was inside was cooking. And he said, Peter was very hungry. But while he waited, he fell into a trance, right? And he saw heaven open. And a curtain vessel descended unto him as it had been a great knitted sheet at the four corners and let down to the earth. So no, Peter fell into a trance. Right? So is that something that it happened literally? He, he was dreaming. That's what, that's what it means. He was dreaming. Peter was dreaming. Wherein there was all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, listen what Peter, why Peter tell Jesus this? Because Peter know that these things are not supposed to be eaten. So Peter knows the law. He knows the dietary law. He knows what is supposed to be eaten and what not supposed to be eaten. So listen what Peter tells Jesus. He said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Now, brothers and sisters, I want you to remember these words. Common or unclean. Common or unclean. Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again a second time, what God has cleansed, that call not thou uncommon. So, this is what he said again. And the voice spake unto him a second time, what God has cleansed, that call not thou common. So remember, Peter said he had never eaten nothing common or unclean. Remember these two words. Remember when we started out, who was the, the, um, this thing talking about? It was talking about Cornelius, a man. Right? It was not talking about food. It was talking about a man. So listen to this. This was done twice, and the vessel was received again up into heaven. 
Now, while Peter doubted himself what the vision, so Peter knew that God was not telling him to eat these things. Because, listen what it says, he still doubted to himself what the vision meant. What is this vision? What is it about? So even though he heard the voice three times telling him to kill and eat, he still doubted because he knew the law. Peter knew the law that you're not supposed to eat these things. Right? So listen. Now while Peter doubted in himself what the vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the man which was sent from Cornelius, listen, the man that was sent from Cornelius had made inquiry of Simon's house and stood before the gate. So this is going to come to clarity now, brothers and sisters. We're going to get some clarity. And call and ask whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, were lodged there. While Peter thought and the vision, so Peter was still thinking about this vision that he had. While Peter thought and the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, so the, the angel, while Peter was there wrestling, man, what this, what this dream was about? What was this dream about? The angel came to him. So we're going to see what, what really this dream was about. The angel came, the spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise therefore and get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. So the same angel that went to Cornelius, that told Cornelius to send his men to go find Peter, the same angel came to Peter and told Peter, Hey, these men I sent to you. Go with them. Don't doubt. Just go with them. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius and said, Behold, I am he whom you seek. What is this cause wherefore you come? And they said, Cornelius, the centurion, a just man, and a man that feared God, and of good report among all nations of the Jews, was warned by the holy angel. A lot of people always say the angel, the angels are not holy angels, they're just angels. Listen what is here. He was warned by the holy angel, because remember, they have holy angel and they got evil angel. The holy angels are the one that God is dealing with, that keep God's commandments. The evil angels are the one that came down here with Satan, Lucifer. Those are the evil angels. The holy angels are the one that keep God's commandments and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Those are the holy angels. This is what it says again. Was one, the Jews was one from God by the holy angel to send thee unto his house and to hear the words of thee. Right? Verse 23. Then called he them in and lodged them. And on the morrow, Peter went away with them. The certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. So, Peter brought them into his house, into his dwelling, and he let them stay overnight. And the next day, the next morning, Peter went with them, and one of Peter's brethren accompanied them. Right? So he said, a certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. And the morrow, which is the next day, after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, and he had called together his kinsmen and near friends. So Cornelius knew that Peter was coming, so he called all his friends and his kinsmen, right? And as Peter was coming, and Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up. I myself am also a man. So look at this. Let me give you an example. The Pope. The Pope have people bowing to him. They have people out there have people bowing to them. Like I seen, was watching a YouTube video and some of these black Hebrew Israelites, I seen there was at the corner. And they had these people bowing down to their feet. This actually, this, this girl, this Gentile girl was actually kissing one of them feet. 
This is Cornelius, a just man, one of God's servants. And what Cornelius did, he told the man, Cornelius, to get up. Don't bow down to me, man. I'm just a man like you. But these people out here, the Pope and all these people, got people bowing to them like they are God. Verse 27. And as, as he talked with him, he went in and found that they were come together. And he said unto him, unto, unto them, you know, so listen this, this is the sheet with all the creeping things that Peter saw in his vision. Listen carefully. The sheet that Peter saw that let down from heaven with all those creeping things, listen what it really is. And he said unto them, you know that how it is unlawful is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to come in company or come unto one of another nation. Listen again and see if you can get what I'm trying to say. Verse 28. And he said unto them, You know how that is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or to come unto other nation. But God has showed me. No, I'm not going to read that. <laughs> I'm not going to read that next part yet. <laughs> Verse 28 again. So remember, Peter, them, the Jews, they were forbidden to go amongst these other nations of people. So all these creeping things that was on the sheet, it represented the other nations. That's what the dream was really about. God was getting ready to join these other nations to Israel. So all these other abominable things and the creeping things that was on the sheet that Peter saw in the vision was all of the other nations that God warned Israel or the Jews to stay away from because we were not supposed to make company with them because of who they are. But God, remember, God put us to be a light to the Gentiles. We are the ones supposed to bring them into the fold. We are supposed to bring them into the family to make them Israel. That's our job, to bring the other nations of people into the family of God. So again, brothers and sisters, all these the creeping things that was on the sheet that Peter saw was all the other nations that is not Jew, Jews. So listen to the second half of this. We're going to start from verse um, 28, the top of 28. And he said unto them, you know how it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or to come unto another nation. But God has showed me that I should not call any man, any man, common or unclean. There you go, brothers and sisters. The dream was not about food. The dream that Peter had had nothing to do with food. It was a parable. It says, God has shown me not to call any man, any man, any man, not food, any man common or unclean. So that's what the voice Peter heard. What God has cleansed, thou shalt not call common. He was talking about man. He was not talking about food. So this, this chapter has nothing to do with food. But the preachers then tell the, was telling the congregation that God say what he has cleansed, don't call common. You can eat anything. Brothers and sisters, these are blind pastors. Pastors that was not sent by God. If they're telling you to do something that is contrary to the word of God or to break God's law, these people were not sent by God. They were not sent by God. If they are telling you to break God's law. So again, brothers and sisters, the scripture that says, 
What God has cleansed, let no man call common. It was not talking about food. It's talking about man, the other nations of people that we were supposed to stay away from. God put us to be a light to them, to bring them to him. So God broke down the wall of partition between us and them. So now we are able to go to them to bring them to our God. Because remember, Israel were the only nation of people in the world that had a true and living God. Again, I can show you the scriptures. I am going to show you the scriptures. I'm going to put it up when I edit the video. Israel, or the Jews, is the only nation of people in the world that had a true and living God, which is Jesus and the Father. Every other nation in the world was worshipping pagan gods. Everyone, every other nation was worshipping pagan gods. That's why God put us to be a light to the other nations. That's why he told Abraham, in thy seed will all the, na the nation of the world be blessed. In thy seed, Abraham's seed. That seed that came from Abraham is Jesus. And Jesus made us to go unto the world. He sent Paul to preach to the Gentiles. Remember, Paul is one of us. Paul was mistaken for an Egyptian. The Egyptian people are black people. The Gentiles, brothers and sisters, are white people. White people are European. Those are the Gentiles. I, I heard a lot of my people, my sisters and them going around, our brothers going around saying that we are the Gentiles. We are not the Gentiles. We are the Hebrew Israelite that the Bible speaks about. This Bible is about us and our descendants. The Gentiles is the European or the white people. Paul was made to be a light to the Gentiles. Anyway, enough of that. Let's go to Ezekiel. Because remember, the preachers them is the one that is telling us that we can eat anything as long as we pray over it. That is not the truth. God say he does not hear the prayers of sinners. The Bible says God does not hear the prayers of sinners. So if you're praying over food that God tells you not to eat, your prayer did not go anywhere. Because God does not hear the prayers of sinners. So if you're praying over a table with ham, bacon, pork chops, praying to God, he is not hearing your prayer. You are just praying to yourself or to who is around the table. Because God will not answer a prayer of a sinner. And a sinner meaning you're eating things that he tells you not to eat. Why would you think God will bless that? Why would you think God will bless it? And he tell you not to touch it. Why are you praying over something that he asks you not to touch? Ezekiel 22 and verse 26. Because remember, the preachers them is the one that is telling us that we can eat anything as long as we pray over it. Listen what he says about the preachers. He said, the preacher have violated my law. This is Ezekiel 22 and 26. The preachers or the priest has violated my law and profaned my holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and the profane. Neither have they shown the difference between the unclean and the clean. You hear what the Bible says? The preachers, the lying preachers, have not put no difference between the unclean and the clean. Because remember, they are the ones that are telling you that you can eat anything. All you have to do is pray over it. Why are you praying over something that God tells you not to touch? They have not showed the, put the difference between the unclean and the clean, and they have turned their eyes from my Sabbaths. So they even turn away their eyes from his Sabbaths, because he tell them, don't 
forget, remember the Sabbath day, but they turn their eyes away from it. And they're worshiping on the first day of the week when God gave them his seventh day of the week to worship. Remember the Sabbath day. Why you tell them that's the only commandment that God gave with promise? The only commandment. And the only commandment that he told us not to forget. But yet, that's the only commandment that everybody forget. <laughs> so again, he said, The priest has violated my law and have profaned my holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and the profane. Neither have they showed the difference between the unclean and the clean. And they have turned their eyes away from my Sabbaths. For I am profane among them. So God said he's profane among these lying preachers who is teaching people to break God's law. Let's go to Matthew 15 and 14. Matthew 15 and 14. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 14. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of blind. So Jesus is saying, let them leave, leave these people alone, these preachers. They are blind leading the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, the both of them shall fall into a ditch. So here we are, brothers and sisters. Remember the Bible tells us we have to read to show ourselves approved. You have to read for yourself. Don't let these preachers, so even, even me, even though I am here reading the scriptures, you are still supposed to write these scriptures down, go over the scriptures, and make, ask God for understanding. Ask God for understanding, and go over the scriptures, and make sure you read them for yourself. In that way, you can't say, I say something that is not in the book. Read for yourself. So the Bible says again, there be blind leaders, of the blind. And if the blind leaves the blind, the both of them shall fall into a ditch. So here, here, the preachers is telling us that we can eat anything. If we eat anything, following the preacher what he says, guess what's going to happen? We are going to get punished. We are going to get killed for it. We are going to go end up in the lake of fire for that. The preacher is the blind. And he leaded us who are blind. The Bible says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because they reject knowledge, I will also reject them. So again, if the blind, which is the preachers, lead the blind, which is us, the both of us, which is the preachers and us, are going to fall into a ditch. That's the way God is. A lot of people think God is a big teddy bear. God is not a big puff teddy bear. God is the God of rules. God is the God of regulation. God is the God of order. God is not the God of confusion. Let's go to Isaiah 42. Isaiah 42. Isaiah 42 and verse 18. Isaiah Chapter 42 and verse 18. Hear you deaf, and look ye blind, that you may see. Who is blind but my servants? You know what he says? He says, hear you deaf. Isaiah says, hear you deaf, and look you blind. Who is blind but my servants, or deaf as my messenger that I have sent? Who is blind as... That is perfect and blind as the Lord's servant. So he's saying these preachers out there who call themselves servants and preachers and leaders, they are blind. They are blind leaders. These people were not sent by God. Because if they were sent by God, they will know what God says. And again, these blind preachers or blind leaders or blind servants are leading us also. And guess what? 
we also are blind. And the Bible, as I say, tells you, if the blind leads the blind, the both of them are going to fall into a ditch. Job 14 and 4. Job chapter 14, verse 4. Job chapter 14, verse 4 states, Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean thing? Not one. This, these things, these scriptures is all over the Bible, brothers and sisters. He said, who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? If it's unclean, it's unclean. No matter how much you pray over it, it's not going to be clean. A pig is a pig. And by you praying over that pig, it will not make that pig clean. Shrimp is an abomination. No matter how much you pray over that, that shrimp, it will not be clean. It's still an abomination. Pork chop, bacon, it's an abomination. No matter how much you pray over it, it's still an abomination. No one can bring a clean thing out of an unclean thing. If it's unclean, it's unclean. It's thou shall not. That's the only law that we're supposed to um, adhere to. Thou shall not. Let's go to Isaiah 65. This is future, brothers and sisters. So we have no excuse. This is in the future when Jesus comes back. So if I, when I read this, and people out there, my, my people, still choose to eat these things, then we deserve what we get. We really deserve what we get. Because here I come, somebody come to warn you, hey, don't go around the corner because there's a man with a gun around there and you still going to walk around the corner. So whatever you get around the corner, don't you think you deserve it? <laughs> yes, you do. Somebody came and warned you, don't go around the corner. There's a man firing shots around the corner. Why would you still want to go around the corner? If the Bible tells you that God will kill you for eating these things and defiling your body with these abominable things, if you continue to eat these things and keep defiling your body, why do you think that God should have mercy on you? Us. Why do we think that God should have mercy on us? God is not that vain, man. Brothers and sisters, God is not that vain. And God is not this teddy bear as we make him out to be. He is not this big fluff bear that we make him out to be. God is a serious God. He is a man of order. This same Jesus, he drowned the whole world. You think that's the work of a teddy bear? He drowned the whole world. Kill everything and everybody except Noah and his family. So how can we think this same, this same Jesus, we're going to think is a teddy bear? Isaiah 65. This is future, brothers and sisters. Isaiah 65, we're going to read from verse 2 to verse 6. Isaiah 65, verse 2 to verse 6. I have spread out my hands all day unto a rebellious people. This is future, brothers and sisters. When Jesus comes back, this is that past. So this is no excuse to none of us. This is future. I have spread out my hands all day unto a rebellious people, which walk it in a way that was not good. Remember he says, not good. He didn't say good. Not good. Walk it in a way that was not good. After their own thoughts. Because remember, these things that we are doing and these preachers are telling us that's after their own thoughts. That's after the commandments of man. That's not after God's own thought. Because God's thought said, don't do it, thou shalt not. But the preacher said, you shall. So that's after our own thoughts. 
a people that provoke me to anger continually to my face, that sanctify in garden and burn it incense upon the altar, which remain among the graves. Listen to this, brothers and sisters. He said, which remain among the graves. You know what this is talking about? The people that remain among the graves, he's referring to spiritually dead people. People that are spiritually dead. That is, that's why he said, who remain among the graves. That means we are spiritually dead. We're spiritually dead. Which remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments which eats swine's flesh. You hear what he says? That's eating pork and broth of abominable things. Broth of abominable things, brothers and sisters, is soup. You know when you have a pot with soup? That's, a bro that's broth of abominable things in their vessels. That means shrimp, crab, lobster, all these things that they tell us not to eat. They're in our pots. Defiling our body, our temple, this holy temple that God gave us, we're defiling with these abominable things. Let me read verse 4 again. It says, which remain among the graves, that means spiritually dead people, and lodge in the monument which eats swine's flesh and broth of abominable things in their vessels, which say, stand by thyself and come not near me. For I am holier than thou. Who is going to be the one acting like they are holier than thou? These preachers. But yet they are the one that eaten these things. They eaten these things and eaten soup with shrimp, crab, lobster, oysters, mussels, all of these things. But yet they claim that they are holy. You know what the Bible says? Which say, stand by myself and come not near me, for I am holier than thou. Listen to what God said. He said, these are smoke in my nose, a fire that burneth all day. He said, these people are like smoke in his nose. He said, behold, it is written before me. I will not keep silent, but I will recompense, even recompense unto their bosom. So he's saying, God said he will pay them back for what they're doing. Defiling his body. Remember, this body is not ours. It belongs to God. And he said, don't defile his body. We are supposed to be holy as he is holy. So he said, it is written, meaning it's written in the book, that he will not keep silent. He will pay us back for what we are doing to his bodies. Let's go to Isaiah 66. Isaiah 66, are we going to read 15 to 17? Isaiah 6 to 6. We're going to read verse 15 to verse 17. For behold, this is future again, brothers and sisters. This is in the future. He said, behold, the Lord will come with fire. Remember the first time he came, he came with water. This time he coming with fire. The Lord will come with fire and with a chariot like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. So you hear what he says? He's coming to render his anger with fire. For by fire and by a sword. So he said he will have a sword and fire, will the Lord plead with all flesh. Plead here, brothers and sisters, it does not mean beg. Plead means to kill. The Lord will plead with all flesh, it means to kill. What can you see? 16 again. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. And the slain, that means the killing of the Lord shall be many. They that sanctify themselves, so they that set themselves apart and purify themselves in the garden behind one tree. Who is this tree that we're behind? This tree is the same tree that was in the garden of Eden. This is none other than Satan the devil. 
they that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the garden behind one tree, the tree in the garden is Satan the devil, because remember that's the same tree that was in the garden of Eden. Satan, Lucifer, the dragon. So behind Lucifer, in the midst, eating swine's flesh. So we're hiding behind the devil, eating swine's flesh. Because these preachers are the devil who are telling us that we can eat these things. They are the devil. We are not supposed to do that things of the devil. The preachers them was telling us that we can eat these things. They are of the devil. That's why they're telling you that you can eat these things. Eating swine's flesh an abomination. Is a them and the mouse shall be consumed together, say the Lord. So just like how God killed the mouse, is the same way he's going to kill us for eating these things that he tells us not to eat. This is future, brothers and sisters. This has not passed. This is coming. This is coming. This is not past. This is future. Brothers and sisters, we are not supposed to be eating these things. When you look at Facebook, you look at the media, you drive down the road, you see these, these restaurants with a big pig on it, Porky's house or whatever. These places, God are going to destroy these people. These people who are cooking pork and bacon and all these things and eating these things, God are going to destroy us. He's going to destroy you for eating these things. God is not playing. He is going to kill you for eating these things. Disobedience is sin. The wages of sin is death. So people, these preachers are telling us that God fulfilled all on the cross. Tell me something, brothers. If the wages of sin is death, right? Listen, if the wages of sin is death, and we say that God, not we, they say that God accomplished that all on the cross, why are people still dying? Why are people still dying? If God fulfilled it on the cross and the wages of sin is death, why are people still dying? That because it's not true. God did not fulfill all on the cross. He only came to fulfill that which was spoken of him to fulfill. The book of what I just read is not fulfilled yet. This is the book of Isaiah. The book of Daniel is not fulfilled yet. The book of Jeremiah is not fulfilled yet. So God did not fulfill all on the cross. It's still a lot of things that have to come, have to take place. So the preachers them who is telling the people that God fulfilled it on the cross, you can eat anything you want, that's a lie. That is only words of the devil. They are trying to get you kicked into the lake of fire. That's what they're trying to do. As a matter of fact, that's what they're doing. They're leading us in the lake of fire by telling us to break God's commandments, to break God's laws, to break God's statutes. It is not the truth, brothers and sisters. Wake up. Wake up, my people. Wake up, my loved ones. Wake up. Let's go to... So I just read behind one's tree, right? Let's see who this tree is. Let's go to um, Genesis 2. Genesis 2 and 9. The same tree that they're hiding behind, eating these things. This is Genesis 2 and 9. This is the same tree that is in Isaiah 66. And out of the ground, God, the Lord God made God, let me see. Excuse me. Is it out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food? This is what it says. The tree of life also. So this means he's talking about something else. The tree of life also 
in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So these were two other trees that was in the garden outside of the other the regular fruit trees. The tree of life is Jesus. Jesus is the tree of life. And the tree of, of the knowledge of good and evil is none other than Satan the devil. So Satan was in the Garden of Eden. That's why he approached Eve. Because he was in the garden. That was the fruit that Eve ate. She ate the fruits of lies. Satan, the devil, Lucifer lied to her. And she took the lie to her husband. That's why when Jesus came, Jesus asked them, who told you that you were naked? They did not eat any fruits, literal fruit, or any vegetable or any apple. That is not the truth. They ate the fruits of lies. Satan lied to her. God tell them the day that they eat of that tree, they're going to die. The devil, Satan told her, you shall not surely die. He lied to her. So when God come, what he said? Did you eat of that tree that I tell you not to eat of? Did you listen to that, that tree that I tell you to stay away from? It was the tree of good, of knowledge and evil, which, was, which is Satan. It was not an apple tree. It was Satan, the devil, that was in the Garden of Eden. That's the same tree that is back here in the book of Isaiah 66, where he said these people are hiding behind the devil, eating pork, swine's flesh and soup with abominable things. Crab, shrimp, lobster, oysters, all of these things, brothers and sisters, is an abomination. And God is going to kill us for it. The wages of sin or disobedience is death. Revelation 18. Revelation 18, 2 and 3. Revelation chapter 18, verse 2 and verse 3. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and become the habitation of devils, and the whole of every foul spirit, and caged bird, and every unclean and hateful bird. So this is the book of Revelation. And it's still talking about unclean birds. And this is the book of Revelation. It's still talking about unclean birds. So that means the things them is still unclean. Nobody can get a clean thing out of an unclean thing. If it's an abomination, it's an abomination. No matter how, many, how much you pray over it, it's still an abomination. You cannot pray over nothing that is unclean and suddenly it becomes clean. That's a deception. Revelation 21 and 8. Revelation 21 and verse 8. Revelation 21 and verse 8. It said, But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable, you know what that is? The people who defile the temple with the abominations. The fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderer, and the homemonger, and the sorcerers, and the idolaters, and the liars shall have their part in the lake which burn it with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So you hear, brothers and sisters, is right here in the book of Revelation. The abominable is the people that eats these things that God say not to eat. You hear what he said? Where are they going to end up? They're going to end up in the lake of fire. They're going to end up in the lake of fire. We are not supposed to eat these things. Our body is not ours. Our body is the temple of God, and we are not supposed to defile our body with abominable things. The Bible says they are going to have their part in the lake of fire. I did not write it. It's in the Bible. Let's go to Romans 8. We're going to read 7 and 8. Romans chapter 8. We're going to read verse 7 and verse 8. 
Romans chapter 8, verse 7 and verse 8. Let's start from 5, 5 to 8. For they that are after the flesh do mind things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. So the, the flesh, all these things of the flesh, a carnal mind, commandments of man, these are not things of the spirit. The things of the spirit are in this book. The things of the spirit are in this book, what God said we have to do. These things that we have been fooled and tricked by is things of the flesh. That's why a lot of times when we talk to people, when it comes to the word, I don't know why we do that. When it comes to the word, people always tend to insert themselves into the feelings into the scriptures. Brothers and sisters, when you read in the Bible, you cannot put your feelings into it. You have to remove your feelings out of it. Because if you put your feelings into it, we're, going to, we're not going to adhere to the Bible. We're going to do what, what the, the flesh tells us to do. You got to remove your feelings when, you come, when you're dealing with the Word of God. The Word of God has nothing to do with our feelings. Nothing. It has nothing to do with what you think, what you believe, or what you what, here, what you think, what you believe, or what you feel. The Word has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with what thus says the Lord. That's it. The Bible cannot convert to us, we have to convert to the Bible. The Bible does not have to change to satisfy us. We have to change to satisfy the book. Because the book is God. This book is God. When we do what this book says, we please God. Because this is His words. For they that are after the flesh do mind things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. You hear that? To do things of the flesh which is carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. You hear that? The carnal minded people hates God. They are enmity against God. For it is not, they are not subject to the laws of God. Neither indeed can they be. <laughs> it said the carnal minded people, they are not subject to God's law. Neither can they be. You know why? Because they follow the laws of man. The doctrine of man. They don't follow the laws of God or the doctrine of God or the commandments of God. They follow man's law. Again, it says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the laws of God, neither indeed can they be. Let's go to Hosea. This is the last scripture. Hosea 4 and 6. Hosea 4 and 6. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. It states, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. So we wonder why our children is going through what they're going through out there. Because God has rejected them. Because we are not keeping God's law. So what he does, he rejects our children. The reason why our children is get shot, shooting down in the street, killed in the street, hanging out on the street corner, making up the population of the prison system, because we has rejected God. We has rejected knowledge. 
the knowledge of the Bible, the wisdom of the Bible. We have rejected it. So God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And because they have rejected knowledge, I will also reject them. That thou, they, will be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten my law, I will also forget their children. So brothers and sisters, I hope and pray and wish and hope and pray and wish that somebody, someone, anybody, anyone get some understanding from these scriptures. Brothers and sisters, these food, pork, bacon, shrimp, lobster, all of these things, rabbit, duck, roaches, mouse, dog, cat, we are not supposed to be eating these things. These things, the Bible refers to them as an abomination. And there's nowhere in the Bible that God says it is now okay for us to eat these things. The preacher that tells you that it's okay to eat them, they are trying to kill you. They are trying to get you tossed into the lake of fire. And guess what? If we continue to listen to them and do what they say and not what the book say, guess where we're going to end up? In the lake of fire. I hope that you got some understanding. Peace in Jesus' name. One love.